moving through our process at the conclusion of the pōpuri tikanga, then we'll move into the address um, by Matua Anthony um, from the lectern, followed by our final word, kaupapo, uh, and then our guru will move on from here. Kapai? Etu.
I could ask the two head students to come up to the sanctuary, please. So that brings us to the end of the porphyry, and uh, it's now my honour uh, to deliver the first headmaster's address for the year. On behalf of our headmaster, Mr. Grant Lander. Um, Mr. Grant Lander uh, has a flu, um, and in any other year, probably building up to 2020, he would be here and delivering the speech. But since 2020, we have taken a different approach when someone is feeling a little bit unwell, and you must stay away from work. So he is um, undoubtedly sitting at home, watching through that camera as I speak, making sure that I am saying words accurate to what he will be saying. I'm being watched. Yeah, everybody wave to Mr. Lander. Now, um, while you're doing that, it is very hot in this room, so I ask every student, if you'd like to, please remove your blazer, place them on the chair behind you. Thank you, school. So, tihe Māori ora. Ko te tuatahi mihi nui atu ki te mātua i te rangi te nā koe. Tuarua mihi nui atu ki a ihukaraiti mi te wairua tapu te nā kōrero. Whakohono ki te kingi Māori a tuheitia me tono whānau te nā koutou. Haere, kingi mata, haere, haere, haere ki te pō. Ki te tūmaki Mr. Lander, o tēnā i kura, tēnā koe, ki nā kaiko hui, tēnā koutou, ki nā ako mai, tēnā koutou katoa. Tēnā koe me te mihi kai koutou. So basically what I've said is I've acknowledged everybody here in this room, and I made special mention to those that have actually spoken here today, our guests. The primary function of this event is to welcome the new students, the new staff, to this community. But I want to make special mention to those people who have come as colleagues, as friends, as family, who have come on this journey to welcome someone connected closely to them to the new journey of their working or schooling career. Special mention to our, our friends, our brothers, our sisters at St. Peter's in Cambridge. Welcome to the Chapel of Christ the King. You are always welcome in this building and it is really nice to have you here amongst us today and some old friends as well. Mr. Rollins, good to have you back. It's my great pleasure to add to the greetings provided by uh, Matua Taki Turner and by uh, Matua uh, to the people uh, we welcome from the Four Winds to St Paul's Collegiate today. I say Four Winds because each and every one of you have come from different walks of life, male, female, day students, boarders, from rural and urban backgrounds, from Hamilton, Auckland, Bay of Plenty, King Country, Rotorua, Cambridge, you get the picture. The moment you set foot in our whārinui, the Chapel of Christ the King, wearing your St Paul's blazer or formal dress of work, you gained a new identity, a new group of friends, a new family. You'll never leave aside the support of old friends and family or the skills that these people and experiences have shaped in you. But St Paul's will add a new layer of knowledge, of skills and opportunities which you will hopefully harness. Today, you formally become part of the St. Paul's community, the St. Paul's family, an experience which we hope you will gain great benefit from in your learnings here and learnings that will hopefully treasure and benefit you for the rest of your lives. No my hari mai, welcome. I'd like here to take this opportunity to not only offer my congratulations to all the new students and staff, but also to those that have chosen to return. Our returning students and staff have a knowledge of the school's history, mythology, and law, and have helped establish a unique culture, a contribution that should never be underestimated. So welcome back. Learning itself is a messy and really linear business. Using the example of a baby learning to walk. On average, he or she falls 743 times quite an exact number, maybe an approximate, before they actually make that first magic halting step that causes parents to yelp in joy. 
quite often though, when those parents start screaming, it scares the baby and they fall straight back down again. But they get up and they try all over again. And once they have learned to walk, they begin the process of learning how to run, which causes them to fall repeatedly over and over again. There's a pattern here. Learning is a series of setbacks that culminate into momentary plateau. You've reached a mark from which you start a new round. You start again. Imagine, if you will, if the baby had thought, I'm not going to even try this until I am perfect at walking. Nothing would happen. There would be no progress because he, she wouldn't try because nobody starts off as perfect. The baby wouldn't learn from its failure. So my hope for you this year, new students, new staff, current students, current staff, is that you do not strive for perfection. Take a breath. No one's perfect, so stop trying. It will weigh you down. It will stop you from acting, from attempting, from risking. And from, and from experiencing all sorts of things necessary for us to learn, the essence of an exciting life is to be continually open to the learning that comes your way. And most times, it is absolutely necessary to fall over a few times before you master the craft. Challenge yourself to get involved, to not sit on the sidelines. There is no such thing as an innocent bystander. You can make a difference. You have to do it to decide to make a difference. Sorry, I'll say that again. All you have to do is decide to make a difference. Groaning, moaning, and passivity will do nothing but irritate. Rolling up your sleeves and getting involved is the difference between a man and woman of character and one who is not. School spirit begins with each and every one of you. You are only going to go through this school once. So get the most out of it. Give St. Paul's all you've got and your school day joys will be abundant. Put excitement into your life by injecting enthusiasm into your studies, your teams, productions, all of the co-curricular activities. Engage fully in what you choose to do and school spirit and your positive joy will rise relatively and exponentially. Apa te hongo, tai te hongo, te hongo mate, ki te hongo mate, te hongo ora, ki te hongo ora. Pai marere.
Te kore, te kore, te pau, te pau, ki te waio, ki te o marama, tihei Māori ora. E ono nei e kororia ki te atua. E na mana e reo e rangatila mai, teina a koutou. No mai hari mai te whare karakia, te klaiti te kingi. No mai hari mai te wanana, te boru tapu. Teina a koutou, teina a koutou, teina a tātou katoa. Morning school. Great to see you. Welcome back. Welcome back to 2021. Welcome especially today to our new staff. Welcome to you. Welcome to our new students who join us today as well. And a special welcome to our honoured guests from St Peter's Cambridge and from other parts of our nation and city today. Welcome to you. Welcome to Term 1. Welcome to this new start of 2021. And I give thanks to all those who have spoken and addressed us this morning. Matua tahu, we give thanks for your humour. And although most of us went straight over our heads, we could get the gist and we look forward to translation. Bless you for that, it was fun. So welcome, welcome to the space. So now we're just going to have a short, brief chapel service as we conclude and we've finished our porphyry, we've had our haka and welcome, and now we just spend this time together in this sacred place, in this whare karakia, to acknowledge our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ and to acknowledge God, our Creator and Redeemer in this space. And so just now, just a few moments together for wata, for karakia and for some words. The Lord be with you. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray. Healing God, in the touch of Jesus, the sick were healed, the chains unbound. Freedom is before us. Set us on a new path of wholeness. Deliver us from all that binds us. Turn us to embrace that life-giving love offered through Jesus Christ, who is alive and lives with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let's stand for the school hymn, Jerusalem. A reading from the story of Jesus, as told by St. John, chapter 1. At the beginning of his work, Jesus gets his team together. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. 
Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Here ends the reading. I'll ask a question this morning, just for a few minutes, and think about where are we from. Um, much of our porphyry this morning is centred on that question, our tūranga waiwai, our place to stand. Where, from what place do we come? What do we bring with us when we come into this place together? It's a good question to know. We need to know where we're from so that we know where we are now and where we intend to be, where, where we are going. Twenty years ago, as a much younger man, I stood pretty much where Mr. Carpet is right now. The organ wasn't there then, it was the altar. And I stood right there as I was being commissioned as chaplain in 2001, the first time, 20 years ago. There's been a 14-year gap between the two experiences here at St. Paul's. But I was concluding the answering of a call. I was here, been here quite happily for over... 30 years of my life, and following an amazing holiday over here, met a few nice people, a few nice bishops, and they said, why don't you come to New Zealand? And we thought about it, and somebody said, why don't you come to us and work in Akaroa? I said, I'll think about it. Then somebody said, why don't you come and work for us in Gore? I'll think about it. And then somebody said, we've got a great place for you, it's called Arthur's Pass. Come and work for us there. It was all the parishes they couldn't get anybody to fill. And I said, well, think about it. And then somebody said, why don't you come to work for us in Eastbourne? And we said, ah, oh, we'll think about it. Then somebody said, why don't you come to work for us in Takapuna? No chance. And then somebody said, why don't you come to Kirikiriroa? Come to Hamilton then Bishop, now Archbishop, Sir David Moxon, said, come to this place, to St. Paul's Collegiate School. And so we said, okay. And so we made the journey from the north to the south, to God's own country, to Aotearoa, New Zealand. And we've been very happy with that long, long journey, 12,000 miles of it in several waka to get here. It's a long way. And so, here we are. And back in the day, there was just the two of us, Jane and I, and it was scary. We'd had to change nation, change culture, change our people, say good, big, painful goodbyes. And it was hard. And we still give thanks for those who made that a little bit easier, some of whom are with us today. Mr. Groom, Mr. Murhead, Mr. Wilson and others beside. They made that big transition slightly easier for us. And it was good to be here. Just a few weeks after we'd arrived, the excitement died down, we realized actually it was quite lonely as well. It's quite lonely to move. It's 
quite lonely to go from your Tulang or YY into a new place where you don't know people, where there are many strangers, new experiences. It can be really hard. And some of you may be resonating with that now. You people have come from all parts of Aotearoa. I acknowledge the borders that have been on big journeys to get here. I particularly would like to acknowledge this morning our international students, those of you who decided to stay in New Zealand. You haven't been home for well over a year. I've acknowledged you today and give thanks for you and being among us still for your education. A few weeks after we arrived, we went here. We had a short holiday to Dunedin down the South Island. And while we were there, we went on this wonderful tour of the Otago Peninsula, a beautiful part of this nation. And the guide took us to a beach. And he said, come and see this beach. And he said, you see that rock out there? Yeah, we could see the rock. He said, Captain Cook worked out in around the 1780s that that rock is the furthest place on the entire planet from London, where we'd spent several years before we moved. And I looked at that rock and I thought, you know, that's the farthest away from home I can get. And boy, did I feel lonely that moment. That's as far away from my whanau as I can get. And then the guide said, but he was wrong. He was wrong. He wasn't as good as navigation as the coupe and the others. He was wrong. They used GPS, satellite technology, and all the modern navigational stuff to recalculate his numbers from the late 18th century. He was wrong. That wasn't the furthest point on the planet. He was wrong by 50 meters. That rock is the furthest place on the planet from the Greenwich Observatory in London, interestingly enough. Where are you from? Where do you come from today? What parts of our nation do you come from? What do you bring with you? It's a question that's going to be asked of you a lot the next few days as we settle into school life. Well, where are you from? And people will either oh, express a little bit of surprise, and sometimes they turn their nose up at it. And this happened to Jesus. He grew up, we know he was born in Bethlehem, we've just celebrated Christmas, but he was grown up in a place called Nazareth. Nazareth had the reputation of Hamilton 30 years ago. It's a bit of a place where most Kiwis would turn their nose up at. When we went back to the UK, they said, oh, where did you live in New Zealand? We said, Hamilton. I went, oh, happened a lot, particularly Aucklanders and others. It was no different for Jesus. He was born from Nazareth. It was a town where people would turn their nose up at. Nazareth? And we had that question from Nathaniel, one of Jesus' first followers and disciples, who said this question, can anything good come out of Nazareth? They weren't used to good things coming from this space. And we often do this a lot. Can anything good come out of Auckland? Can anything good come out from the Mount? Can anything good come from Fongamata? Perhaps not this last New Year's Eve, if you saw the press reports. How many of you were there? Yeah, you're not going to put your hands up, are you? Yeah, I was on the cafe. No, no hands up there. Anyway, we are, can anything good come from these places? I heard one of the Thaki bishops talk recently, he said, can anything good come from Nati Puro? Can anything good come from these places? We ask these questions a lot. It's important to know where we're from, but it's important to remember, as Mr. Robson said, today is a fresh start, a new beginning for students of last year and also for new students as you come from your schools, your previous schools, and new staff as well. It's a new start, a fresh start for us all. Because alongside knowing where we're from, we need to know where we're going. Where are you going to go this year? Where will this year take us? We sat here together this time last year. We had no idea where 2020 was going to go back then, did we? And look what happened. And look where we are now. But alongside that question, this is a deeply personal question. What are you going to do with this year? This gift, this opportunity you have 
before us? Are you going to use it well? Are you going to waste it? You need to address that question. Not at the end of term one or two, but today for the rest of the year. Where are you going? God bless you on your journey. And remember that Jesus, the whole point of this place, this whole school, everything we do is around this, these words of Jesus to give you the opportunity to live a full, abundant life. That's what we're about here. That's what we want for us all, to live a full, abundant life. Not to be dragged down by anything, by any kind of negativity, and whatever shape or form that presents itself. But you to each have that glorious, God-given opportunity to live a full, abundant life. And may God bless you on that journey. Let us pray. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks as we begin this new school year. We give thanks for the holidays and for rest and recreation. We give thanks for the opportunities that are now before us, and we give thanks for those who make these opportunities possible. We pray today for our school, for those who lead, teach, learn, work, and live here. We pray today especially for all new staff and students, for their families and friends. We pray for all those who are a long way from home that they may settle in well, and we pray for our boarding houses and all of our housemasters. We pray for all those who have gathered at this porphyry today and give thanks for the words of, wel of welcome, welcome spoken. Lord, bless us all this year. May we all strive in our strength to build a community where all are valued, accepted, safe, and free to realize their full potential. We make this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, Mr. Robson will now formally welcome our new staff. Okay, in the chapel today, we'd like to take this opportunity to formally welcome a number of new staff to our school. We wish them all a satisfying and stimulating experience while working here. Um, what I'd like is, as I call their name, to, I invite them to come forward. Uh, the head boy and head girl will then gift them a, uh, a book titled Adventure in Faith. I'm quite conscious that you're all intertwined and seats throughout there, so the best approach may be if once you receive um, your, your gift, just to stand on the edge and we'll have all 11 new staff standing up here, and then as a school, we'll give them a round of applause once they're all up. So first we have Mr. Greg Haynes. He's the Director of Teaching and Learning. So Mr. Haynes has a Bachelor of Commerce and Administration, Economics and Commercial Law from Victoria University of Wellington. Uh, he has an exemplary teaching career across a number of leading New Zealand schools, including Wellington College, St. Kennigan College, and most recently St. Peter's School in Cambridge. Mr. Haynes also did six years teaching at Hertzbeer Point College in the United Kingdom. For the past four years, Mr. Haynes has held the position of Deputy Principal at St. Peter's, and prior to that was the Acting Head of Teaching and Learning and also the Assistant Headmaster at St. Kennigan College. Mr. Haynes has a long-standing background of five years as a boarding house master and his sports of passion are hockey and cricket. Mr. Adam Ross, Teacher of Mathematics. Mr. Ross gained his Bachelor's in Teaching majoring in Human Movement and Health Education from the University of Sydney, Australia in 2010. Moving to New Zealand the following year, he spent five years teaching mathematics at Karamu High School in Hastings, one year in the United Kingdom, uh, Darton Manor High School in Ealing, London, uh, and then back in 2016, came back to New Zealand to work at Fielding High School, Manawa II. Joined their staff as the head of boys boarding and mathematics teacher. Passionate rugby player, he's played representative footy uh, for teams such as Hawke's Bay, Poverty Bay, New Zealand Marist, and New South Wales suburban teams. Mr. Fraser Wilson, teacher of biology and general science, a collegian from 2001 to 2005, and a staunch member of Fitchett House. 
Mr. Wilson started teaching six years ago, the last four of which have been at Auckland Grammar School. Prior to that, he was at Oweta College. His co-curricular interests are athletics, rugby, football, and basketball. Mr. Asaya Duncanson. Physics and general science. A first year teacher, Mr. Duncanson, recently gained a Bachelor of Science degree from the University of Otago. He gained, he gained sorry, he had the honor of being head boy of Otomotai College in Tauranga. His co-curricular interests are rugby and volleyball, with the sporting highlights including selection into the Otago Sevens team in 2019 and representing the Bay of Plenty Under-18s back in 2015. Drew Tierney, teacher of English. Mr Tierney was most recently the assistant head of faculty at Cambridge High School, having taught previously at St John's College from 2007 to 17 where he held year-level dean responsibility. He was also at St. Peter's, Cambridge, 2001 to 2005. He is an experienced rowing coach and international rowing umpire. Kieran Taylor, teacher of history and geography. Mr. Taylor gained his Bachelor of Social Science, History and Geography at the University of Waikato and has been teaching at Thames High School since July 2016, where he has been the teacher in charge of history and last year was the co-dean for the Year 13 year group. Mr Taylor has been an active rugby player and cricket coach for the past four and a half years. Miss Harriet Norman, aka Harriet Ann Embling, for the staff that have been here a while. Miss, uh, Mrs Norman is a collegian, old girl of Harrington House, 2010-2012. She will take up the teaching uh, position of ESOL, ESOL classes, until at least the end of term two. She is a fourth year primary school trained teacher and has taught at uh, Karapiro and Leamington Primary. However, her true passion, her true love is dance. And she has an extensive uh, CV of dance experiences and qualifications. She is starting up the Dance Academy, which will operate um, out of the St. Barnabas Annex, just on my right, your left. Mr. Daniel Scanlon. Collegian. Fitchett House 2013-15 and known to most of us here, very proud St Paul's man. He will be covering classes on Fridays for the Reverend Peter Rickman who is finishing off his studies and his uh, postgraduate diploma in teaching. Mr Scanlon will also assist with the teaching of the Year 10 Learning Enhancement Program and take a junior social studies class. Mr Gannon gained his sports science degree from the University of Waikato and we look forward to him providing an opportunity to teach and gain his full teacher registration. His hockey skills and uh, achievements are well noted and will be a valuable addition to the school. Uh, Fire Crystal Taipa, Te Reo Māori. Fire was a regular part of the school in 2019 uh, when she was completing her teacher trainee. In 2020, uh, Fire joined and taught at Hamilton Girls High School. In 2021, she is looking to work towards completing her teacher registration uh, through the taking of the Year 12, Year 13, and uh, Te Reo Māori, and one junior social studies class. Welcome. In the support staff, we have Miss Morgan Gilchrist Gatley. Her position is titled Digital Marketing Executive. Uh, Mrs. Gilchrist Gatley gained her Bachelor of Communications, majoring in marketing from the University of Waikato. And prior to attending uh, Waikato Dyson School for Girls for the past three years, she's held the position of marketing manager at Wingham Hamilton, following on from initially being employed as their marketing and events coordinator. We've got quite a few numbers, so if we just scoot down. Mr. Scanlon's got a right, yep. And then we join in. We're nearly there, though. Uh, then we have uh, Mrs. Jody Wilson, Clark House matron. Joining the school community back in 2018 when her daughter, collegian, full school prefect and former head of Harrington Day, Kaylee Caulfield, started attending the school. Uh, after a successful career in administration and domestic support, Mrs Wilson jumped at the opportunity to re-engage with the college uh, and put her strong sense of value, work ethic and energy to good use uh, and will add real value and depth to Clark House. I know the boys are excited to have you join the team. So can I please have a round of applause to all the new staff joining the team in 2021.
Okay. Nearly there. Let's say our school prayer together. Heavenly Father, giver of all that is good, we thank you for the blessings and privileges we daily enjoy as members of this school. Give us grace, we pray, to use our gifts to your glory and service of others. Strengthen us to stand firm in our faith in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. May your Holy Spirit so rule our hearts and lives that we may daily grow in the love of you and one another through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So may God the Father fill you with wisdom and understanding. May God the Son be your companion upon the way. May God the Holy Spirit fill you with gentleness, concern, and patience for those in your care. And the blessing of God, creator, redeemer, and giver of life be with you, be with all those whom you love, carry in your hearts and pray for this day and throughout this new year. Amen. Our final hymn in guide me, O thou great redeemer. So as we stand, let's conclude this service together by saying the words of St. Paul's grace in Tileo and English. Kia tau, kia tato katoa, te ata whai o te tato a riki a ihu karaiti, me te araha o te atua, me te whiwhina a teitanga, ko te wairuru tapu, ake, 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 amene. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forever and ever. Amen. So let's go in the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the dignity of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Be strong, be happy, be holy.